Welcome and thank you for joining us on this virtual service for morning prayer, July 26, 2020, which is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. So we invite you to join us this morning using the worship bulletin that was sent out in the chimes earlier this week. Uh, if you've not yet downloaded the bulletin, then there should be a link in the description of this video. And if you're joining us through the Grace Cathedral website, you'll find the link just above this video. We invite you to join us 9.30 on Sunday mornings, including this morning for our virtual coffee hour. Uh, we want to also remind you that uh, we're beginning to offer on-site, that is in the cathedral, times of prayer and meditation by individual appointment. Thursdays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So please just call the office if you want to book some time for that. Uh, we ask that if you come, you observe all of our safety protocols that we've set out. And finally, the forward day-by-day -day, uh, copies are available. Uh, the current issue is August through October, and they will be available in the cloister hallway we ask for a $1 donation. Now let us prepare our hearts for worship. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life.
Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to to the the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, is now, and will will be be forever. forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, Come, let let us adore adore him. Let us say together the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all all you lands. lands. Serve Serve the Lord Lord with gladness, gladness, and and come come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Let us pray together this morning, selected verses from Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant, I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. A reading from the first book of Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people able to discern between good and evil? For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has ever been no one like you has ever been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 12. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, you angels and all powers of the Lord. O heavens and all waters above the heavens, sun and moon and stars of the sky, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, every shower of rain and fall of dew, all winds and fire and heat. Winter and summer, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O chill and cold, drops of dew and flakes of snow. 
frost and cold, ice and sleet, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O nights and days, O shining light and enfolding dark. Storm clouds and thunderbolts glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together, Canticle 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers to Abraham Abraham and his his children children forever. Glory Glory to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as as it was in the beginning, is is now, now, and and will be forever. forever. Amen. A reading from Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The word of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you've worshipped with us for the past couple of weeks, or at least worshipped with a community that follows the Revised Common Lectionary, then you may have noticed that we've been hearing a lot of parables. More specifically, we've been hearing a lot of parables that have a similar message, that the kingdom of heaven is inclusive and that it's up to God to place judgment, not us. When I preached last, I mentioned that Jesus didn't tell parables because they already made sense. He told parables to make sense of the things that didn't make sense in the first place. If Jesus had this many parables about inclusivity and that we are not the ones to place judgment, and if this is the third week in a row of these parables, then this must be really important. There are many things in scripture that might be unclear and are left to discern the direction that we ought to be going in. But this is not one of those times. Jesus is making it very clear for the people, for the disciples, and for us that we are to welcome all and to save the judgment for God. Today, we hear five brief parables The first two express how the kingdom of heaven will grow in ways that we can't necessarily control. We love to talk about these two parables, the mustard seed and leavened bread, in a way that makes them nice and clean. But the idea of a mustard plant and yeast were not appealing to people during Jesus' time. If you've ever spent time in the South, then you've most likely heard of kudzu. It's a type of vine that's everywhere. It can destroy power lines and buildings, and many Southerners loathe even the idea of kudzu. The mustard plant is like kudzu in the sense that it takes over and can't be controlled. For the second parable, we must remember the importance of unleavened bread for the Jewish people. 
It's a symbol that connects them with the Passover and with the Exodus out of Egypt. Yeast wasn't forbidden, per se, but it typically wasn't used. The mustard seed and yeast were radical ideas for the people of that time. But Jesus doesn't leave the people with just these radical ideas. He then brings in two more parables that communicate the joy of the kingdom of heaven that simply can't be contained. A joy that causes people to give up all that they possess so that they can take part in this joy, in the kingdom of heaven. The last parable in this set, however, might cause some pause. We go from how the kingdom grows to its joy, to judgment with weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a bit jarring so I want to spend a little extra time on this particular parable. In seminary, I took a class um, on the parables of Jesus. And we were put into groups of three or four and were assigned certain parables to explore, to research, to ask questions, and to write sermons about. The parable of the net is one of the parables that my group explored. One of my group mates was particularly gifted in biblical Greek and pointed out that the word net was actually a specific type of net. This person said, I made the assumption, just as many others would have, that the net mentioned in this parable is the usual minute net cast over strategically from a boat. But after closer observation and study, the word net in this parable is unique only to this scripture. This version of a net is Greek for segenia and is not just any net, but the root word descriptor specifically for a drag net. Drag nets are unique in that they are tethered to the bottom of the water by weights, sedentary, instead of casted from a boat. It is ever expansive, ever present, ever inescapable. It's as if we have a tethered, unavoidable wall to be captured into. But rather than thinking of it as a netted barrier of exclusion, think of it as a beautiful metaphor for inclusion. No matter how hard you try to run from God or you try to scare others away, you are automatically welcomed into the drag-netted kingdom, inclusive of all. The second part of this parable, the part with the weeping and gnashing of teeth. We are once again reminded that judgment is not up to us. If you read it carefully, it says the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous. We are not the angels. We are not God. We are not in charge of who gets sorted where. So what are we to make of this parable? Of who gets kept and who gets thrown back? As humans, we have shown that we are full of bravery and compassion. And at the same time, we have also shown that we can be cruel and cowardly. And these qualities can and do live in the same persons. These can live in each of us. Getting caught up in trying to determine 
how God is going to sort humanity misses the point of this parable. We all have the freedom to make choices in what our priorities are and how we treat one another. My group mates and I wondered, how can we take this a step further? How do we care for and protect one another? And I'm constantly asking myself these days, how do we do this during such a critical time in our lives? Although we naturally group ourselves with certain groups of people based off many different factors, we still have to live in a world where our morals and ideologies are not the same. So what does it look like to share this world with others, especially not knowing how we will get sorted once we've been pulled into the net. We live in a big world with lots of different types of people, and it's not up to us to judge how we will ultimately be sorted. As Christians, we have a responsibility to share God's love with the gift of inclusion and without judgment. Even when it's hard, especially when it's hard, God is there to help us through this very messy world. So welcome all who join you in the net. Don't judge. Welcome them. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son, our Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
Oh God, we look to you in a season of rampant epidemic. We earnestly pray to see the end of it. Bless the dead and dying, and be with all those left to grieve. Bless the decision makers and researchers of our world with deep wisdom for the coming days. Bless those who live out hours of uncertainty pending tests or living in quarantine. Bless all those who provide for the means of our survival, our food, shelter, and medicine. Finally, bless us and the ones we love and care for, that in your good time, the whole world may know you as the great physician, as you are continually revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us, in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth, to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now is the time when we lift up our individual prayers and thanksgivings. 
in our diocesan cycle of prayer, in the Diocese of Kansas, we remember the students and faculty of Bishop Seabury Academy. In our cathedral cycle of prayer, we remember Trinity Cathedral in Trenton, New Jersey. And with permanent altar flower memorials, we remember today Jean Balmar, Robert Crary, Sarah Crary, Dana Killinger Sr., Mary Ewart, Samuel Whedon Crow, and Frank Davis. And we leave space now for your prayers. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you, you have, have given, given us grace, grace at this time, time with, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.